Emma Frame here and welcome to Voices of Yoga podcast, co-hosted with Lindsay Porter, where we bring you inspiring yoga stories and insights from yogis and teachers from around the world. These stories highlight the benefits of yoga and encourage those who maybe haven't started yoga yet to get started and for the more experienced to delve deeper. We hope you enjoy. So namaste, welcome. My name is Lindsay Porter and today I'm introducing our latest Voices of Yoga podcast and it's a special one today because it's celebrating our 150th podcast and it's really been a huge passion project for myself, Lindsay Porter and Emma Frame, co-founders um, of Voices of Yoga. And uh, before I introduce you to today's special guest, I just wanted to share that um, it's times like these that I feel all my yoga practices and my pranayama, my breathing really help me just so I can be ready and grounded for introducing you to the amazing legendary leader and back to yoga Jai Utel. Um, he, Jai Utel has many credits to his name as I'm sure you know but just to uh, mention some of them he's a Grammy nominated artist, a sacred music composer, um, has been playing kirtan and sharing it for around 50 years I, I believe. Um, he's a multi-instrumentalist so um, he's currently based in San, Fris San Francisco with his wife Nubia Tukshera. So uh, Jai welcome and namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much, Lindsay. It's so lovely to see you in person after seeing you many times <laughs> and hearing you many times. Um, we always like to start asking with our guests about their journey, finding their way onto their path of yogi, uh, whatever type of yoga practices that are. Could you share with us um, how yours came about? Uh, yeah, well, I started playing music. You know, I started playing piano when I was around six. And I, you know, I was really, really, really drawn to music. When I, you know, some years passed, I, I stopped. And then when I was around 11 or 12, a friend of mine introduced me to the five string banjo. And something happened to me then. I, I, as I strummed the strings, I, I felt a sense of sanctuary that I had never felt before. Um, uh, a safety, you know, so I, I just, you know, got deep, deeply and deeply in it, into it. And, and then through my teens, I, I started, uh, you know, transitioning to electric guitar and psychedelic music. But then somewhere around, around 16 or 17 or something, I first heard um, devotional music, both mantra chanting or, uh, and um you know, devotional songs from India. I found some albums, vinyls, and, and really, really, really touched me. And I joined a yoga society and I started practicing yoga, um, asana. And, and the teacher that I had, the yoga teacher, Indian guy, was also teaching us kirtans and chants. And, and we had so much fun with this. Well, one thing turned to another and then I was in India um, and I met my guru, Neem Karoli Baba, uh, and at his ashrams, kirtan chanting was, was, was the background, uh, was the soundtrack, I guess, of this, you know, huge transformation in my life. So when I came back home, um, home being America, kirtan w was deeply, deeply, you know, it, entered my DNA. And, and so I, as I continued that practice, I was also continuing my study of music. I was studying Indian music with Ali Akbar Khan and then, you know, many things going, playing with a Jamaican reggae band and, you know, just so many, so many, so many different musical adventures. But all the while, my home practice, my private practice was, was chanting and usually with a harmonium. And, and then, you know, I never had any thoughts about that being a, a, a livelihood or a profession. But years went by and, and so many things happened. I, I'm making it, you know, I'm 69, so I'm making a very long story <laughs> kind of short. Um, and, you know, they say how one, when one door closes, another door opens. Uh, that's kind of ha happened. And um, I began being asked, by many, many people to come do workshops, little kirtans and stuff. And 
um, as much as I wanted to say no, I couldn't say no. <laughs> uh, wanted to say no just because I was very shy and very, um, you know, super self-critical about my own voice and, you know, I don't want to be like a teacher and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, but the no's kept getting um, pushed away by the yeses. <laughs> and so now is now. I, uh, I'm, you know, Kirtan is still the deepest part of my spiritual journey. It's my profession. And I'm still studying music and expanding my music and using that music to support my devotional path. That's wonderful. And thank you for sharing that story because it also gives people permission to sort of explore theirs. And I know I bought a harmonium a year ago and I'm still really scared to kind of plunge into it. And I, you know, you've kind of helped me maybe get over that and just get going with it. <laughs> well, well, Lindsay, two things, you know, um, I, singing, singing, just singing, period. But then particularly singing in front of other people was unbearable for me. Um, you know, it, it, up until around my, my 40s, I guess. And then, you know, but, but at the same time, I, I, I knew, I felt, you know, that, that I kind of make a joke out of it, but it was sort of true that either sing or die, you know, on a, on a soul level. And thankfully I chose to sing and even now almost every time I sing the inner critic howls at me you know um, but I don't let it paralyze me because I know not only is it the most healing I think I can do for my own soul it's also super healing and beautiful for others but but I share that with people who who are you know feel ultra shy about singing. And I said, you know, join the club. I know it really well. And the other thing for you is, you know, we just finished our first online Kirtan camp. Yeah. And I, you know, we had talked about doing this for many years and I was, I was quite resistant. I felt like, um, how are you going to connect with people? That, you know, you can't actually sing together. It's like that. But um, when the pandemic hit, well, we had a Kirtan camp uh, scheduled for August 8th, uh, you know, a live one. And, and we realized that we couldn't do it. So we created an online course. It was a lot of work, but it was also beautiful work. And I'm so, our first round just ended and I'm, I'm so moved and gratified at how deeply it touched the participants and how um, transformative it was and how we created a family. You know, that's, that's the thing that I, I, I didn't expect. I don't mean we created a family, but a, a family be, became created or created itself. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think sometimes when you're restricted in other ways, then you have to find a new path and it's almost like that online difference in energy, but still some sort of energy is just needed to happen, hasn't it? Um, yeah, and it's, I, I do think the whole pandemic has really brought to the fore, perhaps even more and possibly to different audiences, how Kirtan can come across and connect and unite. And I was uh, fortunate enough to see you do some live stuff on Instagram recently. And as you say, the Kirtan camp, um, do you think you'll do some more of that? Oh, yeah, we're, we're so happy with it um, uh, that we're, we're running the, re, we're rerunning the, the camp that we did, but with new live sessions, but the pre-recorded material, we'll, we're starting it again in September and um, we're doing a level two uh, that's going to be longer. It's going to be partially in December and partially in January. You know, we're going to take a, a winter break and we're, we're doing more live sessions and, and still a lot of, a lot of material pre-recorded and you know, part of the camp, but I'd say a small part, but still a potent part, is uh, harmonium tutorials and, and guitar tutorials, learning how to play these songs. And, but, it's, but it's not like, a, like the main thrust is technical, because it's not. Mm. The main thrust is, um, you know, how do we connect with spirit in our hearts on a, on a day to day uh, level and, and practice. And, and 
as I teach that, I learn that, you know, it's, it's, it's a challenge. <laughs> So I wanted to, um, one of the things many people have seen you recently in is the Mantra movie, which came out a few years ago. And I was very fortunate enough to help support the premiere of that in Edinburgh. Um, mm -hmm. And Georgia Vies, the lovely director, came across and did a Q&A. And oh, it was amazing. And uh, the many people that I know that have seen the movie um, always remember the part where you go into San Quentin um, prison and you're playing with the people. And every time I watch that movie, and I've forgotten how many times I've seen it now, but it always kind of makes me laugh and cry at the same time. Um, how was that experience for you doing it live? Um, well, that wasn't the first time that I went to San Quentin. We've, prior to this year, uh, a small group of musicians and, and myself have gone in semi regularly for like 10 years or something. Wow. Um, I say semi regularly, like, like, like maybe four times a year. And um, it's always a little intimidating at first. It's a, it's a heavy place, you know, there's heavy energy. But, um, and there's like lots of security points, you know, it's, <laughs> they have to take apart your instruments. It's really, wow. you know, it's, it's, it's a lot more tense than, than even an airport. <laughs> Um, but anyway, uh, once we gathered with the guys and started singing, you know, it's, a, a, it's maybe 50 to 75 guys that, are, that come t to our thing. And the prison is what, 3,000 people? So, mm -hmm. Something like that. So, so it's not, you know, the whole mass of the incarcerated men. But um, they are so deeply committed to their spiritual inner life. Um, most of these guys are, are in the prison either for life or for very long sentences, you know, 40 years, 50 years. So it's not like they're sitting around thinking about, okay, when I'm out, this is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, some I'm sure are, but, but um, the guys that w were regularly coming to the Kirtan, they were not thinking that way. They were thinking, I am here and I am stuck here what can i do to uh bring light to my soul in each day you know how can i make my experience here um elevate my consciousness ele uh, you know cleanse my the mirror of my heart and mm -hmm. and you know they're really beautiful really beautiful guys so um i was trying to to do a, a album there record an album there and i and i they just get the you know the prison authorities kept turning me down i don't exactly know why but when georgia approached them to make them to to do the filming they said yeah. yes and, wow and so by that time you know most of the guys already knew me we i, I won't say we're like close friends but we were, we were friends you know mm -hmm. it, it was a community and um and you know georgia and her little team happened to capture an amazing night you know i would say that all, all every time i've been there it's it's been pretty mind-blowing and just like staggeringly awesome but when georgia came with the with the film crew i don't know something just lit up that night and and um you know uh i don't know if you know this or if you spoke to Nubia about this but today just today i'm releasing a song and it's a song that's dedicated to the inmates at San Quentin because through just a completely irrational and unconscionable action, uh, 120 infected prisoners were brought to San Quentin and San Quentin had no infections. And now it's over 2000 and many, many are dying. And I just got a letter today from, um, the minister who kind of was uh, running the interfaith program saying that the chapel has been gutted and um, turned into a, a, a hospital room, you know, with many, many mm -hmm. beds. But there's, mm -hmm. there's just no real medical care. And this is super sad. And, 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 you know, since I had this personal connection, I just like this song just came out of me and we rec I wrote it in a day, we recorded it in a day. And we actually had to wait two weeks to release it because of technical things, but. It's releasing tonight, is that right? 
I'll sing it tonight. Yes, and okay. and you know, it, as of today, it's it's out on Spotify and Apple Music and you know all all those things. And it's not something that you know. It's not like I expect to make any money from it, but I, I'm really hoping that it, it will bring some awareness. You know, we uh, San Quentin is like a 12 minute drive from where we live, and and most of the people around here are so unaware of the situation. So, well, just like, you know, Bhakti, you know, people, a lot of people identify Kirtan singing and Bhakti with just a bliss out. Mm -hmm. yes. And there, there is such a beautiful, um, you know, higher state of consciousness that seems to come when a group of people sing together and that's just like an awesome thing but but really the 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 foundation stone of bhakti is is sharing and helping others so um you know so that's the motivation of of making a song like this so many of my fellow bhaktas and just the yoga world in general don't have a clue about what's what's happening just down the block yeah. And um, yeah, so it's like and it, it's just way. so so empowering and so lovely that you know you do reach out and help all these different groups. And I know as well as the the prison community, you've also um, dedicated some of your work to children, and you created um, the the Kirtan for kids, didn't you? The elephant, the monkey, and the little uh, butler, butter thief. Yeah. <laughs> Can you share a little bit about what that what that is and how that came about? Well. Uh, I'll I'll completely blame that on my son. Um, it, you know, when he was a baby, I was singing here to him. To him, when he got a little older, I was telling stories to him. You know, from the, the you know the ancient tradition, and and then when he was in preschool, his preschool teacher um, asked me to come over and sing a little and tell some stories. So I did. And then when he was in kindergarten, they asked me to come over and tell some stories, and I did anyway. You know, it was great joy to me to, to do that. And, and then uh, my friend and I decided to, to make it an album of it. And, mm -hmm. and have you heard it? I've listened to some of it. I loved it. <laughs> so, so the main singers are the, are the kids. Uh, we got a group of preschoolers. We got, a, you know, at, oh, at separate times. We yeah. got uh, kindergartens, first grade, second grade, third grade, up to fifth graders. And, you know, edited all their voices together and stuff. And, and yeah, it's a super sweet album. I tell I tell a few stories directed towards kids. I, I yeah. again I think it's like from age two to about ten or eleven. After eleven, uh, the kids are not that much interested. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I recently read a book that was the Bhagavad Gita for children and I learned so many new things just because the way, you know, it was kind of expressed towards children. And I think sometimes putting your playful inner self, younger self forward can really help you be more open to kind of taking on board stuff. I think it's, yeah, good to revisit I totally, it. I totally agree. It's, you know, the cultivation of a childlike attitude is, is, is so precious and important. And that doesn't mean childish yes different because uh, no you know more and more we need to be extremely mature and and really aware but still can approach things with with a childlike you know freshness and newness um Wonderful. <laughs> yeah i learned that from my son you know um we never avoided topics when when he was little about about what if he asked questions, but we learned how to answer him with truth, but in a way that he, that it wouldn't be alien to him, you know? Yeah. Now he's 15 and he's like, knows everything and he's, he doesn't want much to do with this. <laughs> Teaching you now. <laughs> and he's a rock and roller, he's a, a really dedicated musician. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. Wow. And Jai, we were talking earlier about um, your 50 years of sharing Kirtan with the world. You've got like a huge catalogue um, of songs and everything that you do. Um, do you have a favourite, a current favourite? Does it change depending on the season, the, your mood? It changes by the day. <laughs> or, or, 
Earlier, no, really, I guess it changes by the week. And usually my favorites are, are things that I that are new. Because I'm all, you know, every day, almost, almost every day, I make up a new, not a new mantra, because I'm, you know, I don't make up mantras, but mm -hmm. a new melody or a new harmony for a new song every day. And, and they're not all very good, but, but that, that kind of practice of creativity is, you know, like the center of my spiritual practice. Mm. Anyway, so usually the, the kirtans or songs that are my favorite are, are ones that I just recently, you know, have come up with. Lovely. Uh, and people Lovely. often ask me what's my favorite of one of my albums, and it's really hard. It's really hard to answer that. Oh, I've been listening to Gary's Lullaby all day, and oh, it's just—I know it's quite different to your usual thing, but oh, so special. And you know, thank you for sharing that. Nubia was sharing the story about that earlier, and uh, oh, no, thank Nubia for sharing that. Yeah, yeah I, never, I never intended that to be an <laughs> album to release. But uh, when know. the pandemic hit, you know, the global anxiety level, including my own, just, just you know, going crazy. And, and we thought we should just offer that as a medicine, you know? You did. Well, thank you. And uh, is there anything else you would like to share with the listeners about your journey or your, your back to yogi, your music? Uh, I just, I guess just I, I'd like to, talk about the camp again that if that, that if there's if anyone you know is is longing or, or wanting to dive a little deeper into bhakti um they should check out check out my website and and, and check out our, our kirtan camp um you know we cover all the aspects of bhakti and uh storytelling and uh, my own personal experiences and and a lot of chants and how to play them and you know I think we I feel really still kind of amazed but we we've created a beautiful resource and uh, I hope that you know because like like last week I think we were supposed to be in London or something like yeah, that last yeah I I do hope that the time comes and when, when I can sing with people again in person you know um but yeah we're doing a lot of beautiful online offerings and weekly concerts and so you know people can ju just check out jayutol.com and they'll find lots of stuff <laughs> <laughs> oh the other thing is I, I i i just should add i also have a, a page on patreon where I, um, you know, offer, it's a kind of totally unique, I offer stuff that I, I don't offer elsewhere. You know, a lot of like me at home working on a song or behind the scenes at a concert, if there's ever a concert again, and uh, storytelling and just unique things for people uh, who would like to support what I do. And um, it's kind of like, there's several several tiers, but it's kind of like everyone gets everything. So it's, yeah. it's more like, you know, offer what you can, what feels right, and you'll get the material. And yeah. I, I've been doing it for several years and it, it's, it's really nice. It's another community. You know, it's like we have all these little communities that, that make up the greater community. So uh, uh, it's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Jai Utah. It's based on the old, old system of patronage where artists, I and mean, even like Leon, Leonardo da Vinci, that they couldn't have done what they did without um, being supported by, by wealthier patrons. Mm. In our case, you know, I'm happy if someone pledges a dollar a month. <laughs> um, but yeah. Oh, lovely. Go and check it out, everyone. So we like to ask our guests if there's something to share, something that's currently inspiring them. Maybe it's, a, I don't know, some words or a saying or something they've seen recently. Is there anything that comes to mind for you, Jai? Well, I read, I don't have it all in my mind, but I, re I read a letter 
that John Lewis had written, John Lewis, the civil rights leader, who just recently passed, he wrote a letter to be read after his funeral. And his funeral was yesterday. Yesterday or the day before? Um, and I, I, I came across this on Instagram. Someone had posted the whole letter. And I don't have it, but I would ask anyone who feels the interest. I'm sure it's very easy to find it on, on uh, online. His words were so inspiring. It was like, you know, our quest for freedom. It's not like freedom is not like a castle in the sky. Every day, our, 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 our journey and our quest has to be reignited, re-inspired. It's never like we get there and all, everything's cool. It's always, it's a lifetime journey. And, and he's urging people, you know, he said, George Floyd is, uh, my, my George Floyd, he's saying, was Emmett Till. He was a 14 year old boy who was killed, it was in the 60s, uh, um, uh, in the South by racist um, white supremacists. And, 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 and John Lewis says, you know, when that happened, I was 13. So he was my peer. And that, that ignited me into action. And now I, mm. I'm so, happy to see that you are all being ignited and let it not be just for the moment let it be a life's work yeah. it's really just really 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 beautiful so um i wish i had all the words in my head and i could read it to you but i don't we can find it Jai, thank you for everything you shared and coming to talk to us today on Voices of Yoga. It's been um, just a real honor and um, I wish you luck with all your continued music and especially with Behind the Wolves, the new one that's coming out to support the San Quentin inmates and we'll definitely share the links and everything. Um, good luck with the release of it this evening. Thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Thanks for tuning in to Voices of Yoga and we hope you feel inspired. You can find more of our free podcasts at www.voicesofyoga.com and we are on all the main podcast platforms too. We are very open to comments and suggestions so if you'd like to also leave us a review on iTunes that would be fantastic. If you would like to know when the most recent podcast is going to be broadcast you can sign up to our newsletter on the website and we will drop you an email with that recent update. Voices of Yoga is our passion project and if you like what we're doing and you would like to support us it would be very much appreciated and you can do that through a very small donation on our website on the donation button if you feel so inclined. If you would like to collaborate with us in terms of sponsorship, advertising or even suggest coming on and being a guest then please drop us an email at voicesofyoga at mail.com. So thanks again, and we look forward to bringing you another inspiring yoga story next week. Namaste.